Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Hope you're doing well. Today, we need to talk about gold. Following a critical technical breakout from a long-term cup and handle formation, gold's price has embarked on a major bull run. In fact, the gold price just closed at the highest weekly level on record, $2,391. And when we examine this bull run that gold is on and what is driving the price of gold through the roof right now, we're going to find that this surging price action is likely just getting started. The fact is that the price of gold could surge drastically higher at any moment. And right now, there are many potential catalysts that could trigger such a move. In fact, we've recently gotten a preview of this, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But the bottom line here really is that there's a lot of buyers who still have not gotten into the precious metals market. But that could change very quickly, and when it does, it is going to have some major implications for us stackers. And I've teamed up with today's video sponsor, Great Pacific Gold Corp, ticker FSXLF, to tell you about it. More on them later. And before we get into it, I do just want to say a big thank you to all of you for tuning into today's video. If you enjoy it and you get some value from it, do me a favor, smash that like button down below. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel? So to really understand why gold's price has this huge potential to surge higher, we need to examine what has been driving the gold bull run thus far. And the answer is central bank buying. We know from data released by the World Gold Council that central banks have been snatching up gold at the fastest pace on record. And why not? In an atmosphere of global conflict, de-dollarization, and rising uncertainty surrounding monetary policy and persistent inflation, it's no wonder that the smart money wants to be in hard assets. Now, standard disclaimer here, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't provide financial advice. I'm not telling anyone what to do with their money. But it seems to me that it would be wise to follow the lead of the central banks in this regard. That being said, retail investors really have not begun to jump into this market yet. If you want some anecdotal evidence of that, check out this headline from Bloomberg, which informs us that at Brooklyn Pawn Shops, customers are flooding in to sell gold. Now, this has been confirmed by people that I know and I've spoken with in the coin and the bullion business that among retail investors, there's actually been a lot of selling. It's not entirely one-sided, of course, but a lot of holders of physical metals are seeking to cash in as prices have been rising. There's also the fact that inflows into money market funds are on track for the second highest year on record as investors flee into the perceived safety of cash even as gold takes out new all-time highs. When the reality of inflation dawns on those who are holding record amounts of U.S. dollars, where do you think that money is going to flow. We can also look at the ratio of the S&P 500 to the Huey Gold Miners Index, near the lowest levels in history. Central banks buy gold, not gold stocks. And this is just one more indicator of what has been driving the rally thus far in gold. Premiums on physical gold bullion products like coins and bars also remain relatively low at local coin shops and online dealers. Yet another sign of lackluster demand among retail investors. Remember how premiums soared in March of 2023 along with the crisis in U.S. regional banks? Well, right now, we are nowhere even close to the premiums on physical precious metals that we saw at that time. Then, of course, there's silver. This is a metal that central banks are not buying, the price of which remains at a level just over half of its 2011 peak of 50 US dollars. There are signs, however, that the sleeping retail precious metals investors are starting to wake up. Let's go back to silver for a moment. While still very cheap, Silver Spot closed this Friday at $28.67. This is the highest weekly closing price since March of 2013, over a decade ago. So it looks like some entity other than central banks must be beginning to move into the precious metal space. And if you want a preview of the kind of buying pressure that retail investors can bring to bear on gold in the current environment, when they get scared, 
Just look at the massive spike to over $3,000 that we saw in the gold stablecoin Pax Gold just last week, as uncertainty regarding Iran's drone and missile strikes on Israel soared over the weekend, gold markets were closed, but crypto trades 24-7, and it wasn't central banks that were bidding up this gold stablecoin more than 20% in a matter of minutes. Of course, as we now know, those attacks turned out to not be the opening salvo of a large-scale regional war, and so the panic move into gold has since reversed itself. But that hasn't stopped spot gold from continuing its steady, methodical ascent to new all-time record highs. At the same time, an abundance of possible catalysts for a repeat of this flight into gold remain. So what will be the trigger for the next spike in gold? Well, there's always the possibility of a truly unpredictable black swan type event. But by such an event's very nature, we won't be able to see it coming. One thing we can say about those unexpected problems, however, is that with over $34.6 trillion in national debt, record high borrowing among consumers, already elevated inflation, debt delinquencies on the rise, and a hopelessly over-leveraged, debt-addicted economy now facing the highest interest rates in decades, our financial system and economy are not what I would call resilient. Therefore, the shockwaves of any unexpected problems that do crop up will likely be magnified, and thus the fear trade into hard assets like gold will as well. But black swans aside, there are plenty of looming crises which are all too predictable. U.S. regional banks, for example, the balance sheets of which remain loaded up with low-yielding U.S. treasuries on which unrealized losses continue to mount as treasury yields continue to rise. Commercial real estate exposure for these institutions also threatens to lead to losses in the billions, as we found out in the case of New York Community Bank Corp. recently, the share price of which continues to plummet. And if you think that retail investors poured into gold in March 2023 with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and others, just wait until the next round of bank failures, when it becomes clear that the problems are far more systemic than we've been led to believe, and crisis can only be averted by massive injections of liquidity, aka fiat dollars, into the system. In this scenario, gold could be making double-digit percentage moves in the course of single trading sessions. And we can't ignore the ongoing global geopolitical tensions either. With hotspots on multiple continents, escalating conflicts will only drive greater safe haven demand for gold. As we witnessed last weekend, we are one mistake or escalation away from soaring gold prices. Now, if nothing so drastic occurs, well, there's always the Federal Reserve. Anticipation of more easy money has been driving assets across the board higher, and from my perspective, it seems as though massive amounts of money creation are inevitable at this point. With a deficit now pushing $2 trillion and growing, with over $1 trillion in interest accruing on the national debt annually, the only politically viable way to resolve this debt crisis will be for the Fed to monetize large quantities of U.S. Treasuries or risk imploding the entire financial system. The resulting inflation will drive investors into physical assets, and the first one on their list will be gold. Now, any of these scenarios that I've just laid out have the potential to drive a surge in the price of gold, but there are assets that will be moving even faster than gold itself. Silver certainly is one asset that I expect to move dramatically on the coattails of rising gold. After all, central banks don't buy silver, but with gold surging to all-time highs and becoming out of the reach of many, retail investors will be buying quite a bit of this. Another asset that central banks don't buy is the gold miners and exploration companies, and those also stand to make huge outsized gains relative to gold itself when retail moves in. Despite the fact that gold has been rising, I still view it as cheap, but if gold is cheap, gold companies are currently the bottom of the barrel slashed prices final sale closeouts. The way I look at it is that physical gold represents a savings account for preserving wealth, while gold companies are businesses whose earnings will benefit tremendously from high gold prices. 
and they will provide a means to grow wealth in a soaring metals market. Let's say that the price of gold doubles and goes to $5,000. I'll be very glad to have my gold coins and bullion, my gold backs, all of my precious metals. But the right gold companies will far outpace those gains in percentage terms. And I've partnered up with today's video sponsor, Great Pacific Gold Corp, ticker FSXLF, to tell you about a specific junior gold exploration company with a very compelling case for exactly this type of significant appreciation. For the first part of that story, we have to go back in time to the beginning of another company, K92 Mining. Back in 2014, when mining entrepreneur Brian Slazarchuk stepped off a small plane into the sweltering heat of eastern Papua New Guinea. Brian and his colleagues went on to purchase an underperforming and unloved project from Barrick Gold, at the time the world's largest gold mining company, for just two million Canadian dollars. Then he proceeded to help build a team and grow that unloved gold asset into a booming business with a market capitalization of over $2 billion. So before we get into Great Pacific Gold Corp, I wanna ask you, have you ever wished you could get a second chance to get in on the ground floor of a hugely successful company? You know, Steve Jobs comes back and starts another Apple, Jeff Bezos launches another Amazon, or let's say if you could get another shot to buy Bitcoin for under $1,000 like you could back in 2016. Of course, you probably have, I think we all have, but how often do we actually get a second chance at an offering like that? Well, this, in a way, is one of those times where you actually have that chance. Because Brian Slazarchuk, as well as other members of the K92 mining team, are doing exactly that. They have founded a new gold company, Great Pacific Gold Corp., and they have purchased three key assets in Papua New Guinea. Kessar Creek, Arau, and Wild Dog, and they are just drilling and exploring now. So this is in the very early phases, the ground floor, so to speak, and the level from which huge gains are possible. So can the team at Great Pacific replicate the success of K92 mining? Well, from a proximity perspective, you really couldn't get any closer. You can see here just how close Great Pacific Gold Corp's projects are to K92 Mining's high-grade, world-class gold mine. Speaking of location, you might wonder what is so special about Papua New Guinea anyway. Well, for starters, it is home to incredibly rich mineral deposits, the likes of which can drive a miner from $2 million to $2 billion in just a few short years. But you don't have to take my word for it. This is Tom Palmer, president and CEO of Newmont Mining, the world's largest gold mining company, on his recent visit to Papua New Guinea. So think about that, with gold taking out all-time highs and likely to continue on one of its greatest bull runs in history, this is where the CEO of Newmont has decided to spend his time. As we discussed earlier, you really couldn't pick a better moment to scoop up gold stocks on the cheap. And Great Pacific Gold Corp is no exception. In fact, the last round of financing was conducted at $4 Canadian per share. And yet today, shares are trading around $0.81 cents USD, a huge discount to that price. With no debt and approximately $10 million in cash on its balance sheet, Great Pacific Gold Corp. finds itself in a strong position to expand operations and continue exploratory drilling. And with drilling underway, positive results could provide a powerful short-term catalyst for significant price appreciation. So if you're looking to take advantage of the current incredible value opportunity in the gold space, Great Pacific Gold Corp. is one that I would take a deeper look at. But don't go out and buy this or any stock just because you heard about it here. Make sure you always do your own due diligence. A great place to start is by heading over to greatpacificgoldcorp.com. There's a link down in the description of the video. So is gold headed for a major breakout? Do you expect the price of the precious metals to surge sometime soon? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe and happy stacking. I'll catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.